All toy restorations will be handled by the YouTubers controlling each gem. Reproduction parts may not be used where there are Star Wars forms. Toy restorers and collectors are available. Toy Poloi has been assigned. Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be working on this G1 Transformers Shark Decon Nor figure because uh, although he looks pretty good as you see him now there are a few issues that mean that he doesn't actually transform properly. Uh, these little arms that are on the side of him are supposed to fold up and sort of fold back when he goes into his robot mode and at the moment they don't actually rotate. This one on the left here is so stiff it feels like uh, if I try and push it too much I'm going to snap these hinges and on the other side side you can see that the hinge has in fact snapped and the axle pin or the little pivot pin is starting to fall out of the back of it so uh, these both need to be fixed to get him to be able to transform again his little rub sign doesn't work as well so we can uh, replace that and he is also missing one finger on this hand here so uh, that's another area that we're going to have to fix up so let's get on with the project and see how easy it is to uh, get this guy transforming once more Okay, so here is the figure, and as I showed you, these uh, little uh, sort of wing flaps are supposed to fold backwards so that uh, you can transform him uh, and sort of move these arms up. And when they don't move out the way, uh, yeah, you can't actually transform him. So we're going to have to try and work out what's going on. On this side, you can see that one of the hinges has actually snapped, and this uh, post is sort of falling out the back. If I get a pair of pliers, I should be able to remove that post, and we'll see uh, what's going on. To me, this post doesn't look like a traditional original Transformers post. So it may be that this is someone else's replacement. Yeah, that looks a bit too thick for my liking. And it's also uh, not long enough. So let me just put that to one side and we'll take the post out of the other side. That, now that that's gone, we should be able to remove this arm. Yeah, you can see that has uh, snapped and distorted. So we're going to have to try and uh, rebuild that somehow. Let's go to the other side. Now this uh, pin... To get that out you'll need a small screwdriver or something like that you can normally push on one end of them and they will come out the other end like so yeah oh look yeah so that is much bigger if uh, we look at the other pin you can see that is a bit too short so i think someone has tried to replace this at some point but um, we'll deal with that in a minute and this arm just doesn't want to rotate up oh it's incredibly stiff yeah something going on there maybe this one has been repaired before Oh yeah, I would say someone has had a go at repairing this as well. So uh, they've replaced one of the pins and they've repaired that. And it's all a little bit tight to uh, fit in the uh, socket. Yeah, and that finger is missing. Okay, we've got these off. Let's try and uh, get them back on and get them working again. Right, so I think what is going on is this one has been repaired before. It looks like there's been some damage to it and someone's re-glued that. I can see some stress marks on it. And it looks to me like this is now slightly thicker than it would have been originally, which is why when you try and rotate this up, it's rubbing on the inside of uh, this panel here. And it feels like you will snap it. And I have to say, I think if you try to force this, you would snap it. Everything is now just a little bit too tight. So what I'm going to do is very carefully file down and sand down the inside of these two joints so that you don't actually see it once it's all put back together. I'm going to file those down. And I think this section here also needs something to taken off it just to thin it out a bit so that it doesn't rub on the inside of uh, this joint. I think that should fix that side. So let's do a few little modifications. I've got a small file here and I'm just going to carefully file these surfaces down. Just take a bit of the edge of them off and uh, give it a little bit of leeway. And I think that should fix that problem. Okay, I've filed a reasonable amount of that just to try and loosen up this joint completely. Uh, it's given it a slightly rough edge. You can actually uh, file it down a little bit smoother if you want. I've got some thousand grit sandpaper and I will probably give this a quick uh, once over with some thousand grit just to take any of this or the roughness off. But let's test this as it is. So this should now fit in this joint and that feels a lot better already. There's a lot less sort of uh, tightness going on there. So we'll get the original axle pin there. 
and push that in place. Hopefully that would just slide in. Might need a little bit of wiggling about. Nope, there we go, that's all slid in properly. And now let's see if we can uh, move this arm freely. Oh yeah, that's much better. I can, let me see if I can actually rotate that up. Yeah, that is much better. It was just a too tight a joint and it felt like you were going to snap this arm off. And to be honest, I think you probably would have if you'd uh, sort of given it any sort of force. So um, yeah, that's just freed up that space. That's loads better. So now we've got to do sort of similar on the other side. But first up, we need to repair this broken uh, piece here. It looks like it's been sort of broken and distorted. It doesn't look like there's anything missing. That to me looks like it's been distorted. So what I need to do is uh, boil up some water and I'll dunk this into some just boiled water and I should be able to shake that back to uh, roughly near the original and then we'll glue it back together and uh, make it look uh, sort of complete again and then we can sort out the axle pin. So um, yeah let's boil the kettle and try and reshape this uh, broken piece. Right here is some just boiled water. I'm going to uh, put this piece in, let the plastic warm up a little bit and then we'll try and reshape it. Hopefully we'll be able to get it close to uh, the original shape and then we can do a bit of uh, gluing and repairing and uh, again probably some fine tuning uh, filing off some edges just to make sure it's not too much of a tight fit. It doesn't take long to uh, warm the plastic up so it's probably enough. We can start to uh, move this around. It's starting to go. Let's warm it up a little bit more. Give that another go. Yeah, definitely you can see that's starting to reshape just pushing it on the flat surface of my cutting mat. I've got a pair of pliers here as well I'm going to just gently squeeze this back together. That's probably not too bad. It's probably as good as it's going to get. You can see there's still a little gap there, but we can build that up with some uh, super glue and uh, baking powder, and then we'll shape that. And, um, yeah, I think that will work. Now we need to build up this uh, missing piece where it's sort of cracked and uh, become a little bit distorted. And to do that, we are going to be using super glue and baking powder or baking soda, depending on what you want to call it, in which country you're in. Uh, so I'm going to get some super glue, put it on this piece of paper, and then I'm going to use my uh, little pin here, which is just a pin in an old paintbrush, to carefully put super glue into this gap, just a small amount, and then I'm going to sprinkle on some baking powder and that will instantly sort of go rock solid and then I can put a bit more super glue on, a bit more baking powder until I've built it up and in sort of slightly proud of what we're going to need finally. Once that's all set fully I can sand it down, if there's any in the middle I can drill that out, but we'll basically build this up just with a combination of uh, super glue and baking powder and we should get something that will work really pretty well and it will be a very strong fix as well. So uh, let's get that going. So actually you can see only after a few goes the uh, baking powder and super glue has uh, really sort of started to build up and it goes absolutely rock solid instantly. I will give this a little uh, time to dry and then I'm just going to skip to sanding again, filing, and we'll file that edge down until it's nice and smooth and uh, pretty much you won't be able to see that. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got some thousand grit uh, paper as well just to sort of fine tune everything. I'm going to take a little bit off the edge of this as well to again give it an extra bit of space because it's clear from the other arm that these uh, joints are just a little bit too tight. But you can see that is starting to uh, look like a sort of fairly strong and reliable fix. So uh, yeah, let's do a bit of uh, sanding and filing. I'll we'll get that shaped up.
okay that has shaped up pretty reasonably so you can see uh, that is the one that I've repaired with the super glue there and then just filed it down and the shape's really not too bad at all it's a little bit shorter than the original one I'm guessing that's because it's been broken and distorted a few times but it does seem to fit quite well in here there's no sort of friction so what I'm going to do is line this up as best I can and then I'm going to sort of re-drill this hole uh, ready for a, a new axle. I've got myself here, this is a drill bit which is 2.5 millimetres in diameter, which is the same size as this original axle pin. And I'm just going to carefully push this down the centre here and twist it around just to make sure that everything is running freely, which it does appear to be. Now we can actually test this arm while that drill bit is in place and see if it rotates okay. It's still a little bit on the tight side so I'm going to rotate it into a sort of relatively tight position and then I'll twist the drill bit again and just try and ease off some of the excess glue that's possibly got inside this joint as I've been fixing it. And, um, we can see if we can rotate that around. That's not feeling too bad. I can sense actually that this original joint is still a little bit tight so I'm going to do a little bit more filing like I did on the other side but that's fitting reasonably well there. So um, yeah, let's do a little bit more sort of fine tuning on this. Take a little bit of the excess plastic off this one. And I think that should fit, uh, you know, as good as it's going to, but that certainly doesn't feel too bad. With a little bit more fine tuning, I've now got this to fit. I've sort of sanded down this curved edge here, just so there's a little bit more sort of leeway for uh, rotating everything around. And it does fit really snugly now. Now we need to replace the little axle pin because uh, that original one is actually way too thick and way too short. The original pins are made out of 2.5 millimeter metal rod. And I've sort of been out into my garage to see what I've got. I've got this metal rod, but it's not 2.5 millimeters. So um, I don't have anything that's quite the right size in metal but what I do have is 2.5 millimeter styrene rod and this will do exactly the same job in fact it's probably going to be a bit more forgiving as well because it will have a little bit of flex to it and so because this joint has been repaired certainly that piece there with the super glue on this having a bit of flex is probably a bonus so I need to cut myself a piece that is the right length what I do is I just insert that into uh, the socket there like that get a pair of plastic nippers and I can just cut the end of that off absolutely flush. Now I need to remove that, so I'll just push that out quickly using a pin or something there. Let me grab that with a pair of pliers. And now let's put that arm back on using this piece of styrene rod. The ends of it will be white, so it may be a little bit more obvious. If it really is, I'm going to get a silver pen out and I will just paint the ends of this rod with some silver paint. But I think you can probably get away with it. Yeah, I think you can get away with it. You can see that's the new axle there. That's the old one there. So let's test this arm and see if it rotates fully. Let me close his mouth. Yeah, look at that. That is working absolutely perfectly. So we need to do, uh, sort of re-bend the plastic using some just bold water, then a bit of super glue and uh, baking powder, a bit of sort of sanding. And both of those arms now fold back as they should. Now we come on to the missing finger and initially I was thinking I would do this uh, sort of traditional way that I've done a lot of uh, replacement fingers on uh, characters which is to drill a hole in there, insert a piece of paper clip and then model something with some milliput over the top and shape it. But actually looking at these uh, fingers they're fairly simple, in fact they're quite flat, you can see how flat they are. So my thinking is because of the uh, plastic that's been used to make this arm I can make something out of some styrene sheet and just plastic weld that in place. So that's what I'm going to do, I've got to scrap here of some uh, two millimeter thick styrene and I'm going to have a go at shaping something to match this missing finger. It looks like it's a complete mirror of uh, the finger on this side so it shouldn't be too hard to do. I'm, I'm just going to sort of get cutting and filing. I've got a few different files here. I've got some needle files and some other bits and I'm just going to use those to uh, sort of give it a bit of a shape. So um, let's have a go at that. It uh, shouldn't be too hard to do as you can see we're trying to copy a fairly basic thing so um, yeah let's just give it a go.
That was actually a lot easier than I'd expected. You can see here this is my new replacement finger. It may not look like much but that is as close as I can get to the little finger on the other hand. If I can just sort of bring that in and get it to focus. Uh, it's a pretty uh, sort of reasonable match in its sort of shape. So I'm now going to plastic weld that onto the hand with the missing finger. We'll let that set and then I'll give it a coat of paint. But I think that will actually uh, look uh, remarkably good by the time it's done. Um, normally as I say I would just use Milliput but in this instance because this is the right sort of plastic fill or uh, plastic weld I thought I'd give this a go. So uh, yeah let's plastic weld this on, let it set and give it a paint. This has actually turned out way better than I'd hoped. You can see that that's now stuck on really pretty firmly. So I've just got to give it a little coat of paint. And to do that, I'm just going to use some uh, Vallejo model color paints. I've mixed up a blue that's sort of pretty close. I've used this as a base, which is uh, Andrea Blue 70.841. I've added a little bit of white to that. And I've also added some yellow, which is this uh, game color Sun Yellow, which is 72.006, just to sort of match the uh, tint of this plastic. It looks like it has aged and yellowed a little bit and I think uh, a quick coat of that maybe two coats just because I'm painting onto black and then a clear coat on top of it and um, that will look pretty reasonable it's the shape is very good I'm really happy with how that has uh, sort of uh, come together I was going to do the milliput as I say but this uh, for just a little piece of styrene you know, sort of crudely shaped has worked wonders uh, while I'm painting as well I am going to paint that little uh, post that I've used to uh, hold the right arm on uh, and to do that I've just got myself a silver sharpie I'm just going to color the ends of this silver so it's not quite so sort of uh, vibrantly white and that uh, will hide away just that little bit better. So let's get these bits painted up then we can get the figure fully put back together. I'm just waiting for the clear coat to dry now. You can see I've put a uh, satin finish on that and I think it's matched pretty closely. The blue is possibly slightly bluer than the original but um, uh, you know at a glance I don't think anyone would notice and often that's the best way when you're uh, fixing something like this. If people just don't notice that's all you need. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect but I think that really does the job. So that still needs to dry just for a few more minutes. So while we're, do we're sort of waiting for that we can replace the rub sign. I've already cleared cleaned off the old rub sign. It basically been sort of scratched away partly so I just used some lighter fluid to uh, remove the remnants of that and I have a replacement rub sign here. In fact you can see I can make that work. My fingers are fairly warm so uh, you can see that that is working. This came from the Toy Hacks website. They sell all sorts of replacement stickers and it's always useful to have quite a few uh, rub signs in because the amount of transforms I get missing them uh, just seems to be uh, constant so uh, it's nice to have a sort of set of replacement ones. It's an easy thing to do and it just finishes off the transformer. So let's put this one back on there like so. Just looks so much better. You have to have a rub sign on a transformer to make it look the part. So that's that all done. Give that a few more minutes and I'll uh, reattach that arm and then that will be nor all finished. And here is Nor all fixed up. As you can see, he's looking really rather smart. So that replacement finger there, I think it would be very hard pushed to uh, notice. These arm pieces now rotate properly and uh, you can actually transform him. So let's do just that. Let's transform him from his uh, beast mode into his robot mode.
And there we go, he is now in robot mode. As you can see, he's a bit of an odd looking figure, but I really do like the way he looks. Uh, currently, I don't have any accessories for him. I don't have his weapon. I don't have his sort of little tail mace thing. I've looked online for those and the prices people are asking are a bit on the crazy side. So I'm just gonna leave him as he is at some point. Maybe I will get lucky and find those missing accessories. But for now, he looks good and he can go straight on display. I need to say a massive thank you to Aid, who very kindly sent this guy in, along with a whole load of uh, other pieces. Uh, if you want to check out the unboxings and things like that, then go over to my second channel, Toyploy2, where you will see all sorts of videos like that, and extra videos and complimentary videos to uh, what I do here on Toyploy. So go, yeah, go over to Toyploy2 and subscribe there. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button here on Toyploy, hit the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.